Homesteading has been a lifestyle choice for some as a way to simplify their lives, but it's not without its challenges. In Homestead Rescue, Marty Rainey, along with two of his children, Matt and Misty, traveled across the U.S. to help those who were struggling while living off the grid. The reality television series premiered on the 17th of June 2016 on the Discovery Channel, has gained a huge following, and in 2020 spawned the spin-off series, Homestead Rescue Rainy Ranch. As the Rainies share their expertise and made improvements to the homesteads to set them up for success, its viewers couldn't help but wonder who paid for the rescue projects. So, who are the Rainies? Early on in life, Marty Rainey learned survival skills as he was raised off the grid in North Bend in King County, Washington State, USA. His ancestral home state was actually Missouri, as the Rainies were the first homesteaders in Mount Sherman in the Ozark Mountains way back in the 1890s. He was 16 when he quit school and left everything behind to live his own life. In 1974, he moved to Alaska, saying that no other place could conjure more intrigue, mystique, or adventure. He worked as a logger, and his first house was in a floating logging camp on the Alaska Panhandle's Prince of Wales Island. He married Molly Rostell, and they moved to Haines, Alaska, and lived on a 160-acre homestead, a hundred miles from town. After a few years, they moved to another remote floating logging camp miles away from Sitka's coastal fishing town. Knowing no other way of life, he raised his family living off the grid and off the land. He taught his children, Matthew, Misty, Melanie, and Miles, how to build, hunt, fish, and everything else one needed to know about a lifestyle of self-sufficiency. They were used to living without electricity, indoor plumbing, and all the things that normally made life more convenient or comfortable. His family ventured into the construction business as he established the Alaska Stone and Log Company. They built homes and other structures utilizing natural materials as they quarried stones and peeled logs. His wife was said to be the company accountant, while his children worked with him in various capacities on their projects. The family gained popularity when Marty and two of his children starred in the reality TV series Homestead Rescue, but it wasn't the first foray into the TV industry. Marty had established himself as a skilled mountaineer and having in 1986 climbed Denali, the highest mountain peak in North America, his services were sought by many. Fast forward to 1997. The documentary film, Alaska, Spirit of the Wild, was released, featuring Alaska's wildlife and the landscape in which Marty served as the expedition guide, narrated by Hollywood's legend Charlton Heston and directed by George Casey. In 1998, it was nominated for Best Documentary Short Subject at the Academy Awards. After that, Marty worked in other documentaries, such as Climb Against the Odds in 1999 and An Idiot Abroad in 2011. In National Geographic's Ultimate Survival Alaska, for season one of the series, which was aired in 2013, Marty was joined by his son Matt in a 4,800-kilometer race in Alaska, almost 3,000 miles, using only minimal gear. Only Marty participated in the remaining two seasons as part of the Mountaineers group and Alaskans group, respectively. Having had a taste of reality shows, Marty became interested in doing more and so he pitched several ideas for a TV series to National Geographic, Discovery Channel, and History Channel. Discovery came up with the idea for Homestead Rescue and reached out to the award-winning London production company Raw Productions, known for producing the hit series Gold Rush. At that time, it was said that efforts were being made in getting the Discovery Channel back to its roots, to what they were originally known for, so were keen on airing reality TV series that were as authentic as possible. Marty believed he was chosen to star in the show because, as he said, of his history of living all over Alaska, I think Discovery liked the fact that my family had an adventurous, ongoing Alaskan history happening. According to Marty, the more he insisted on less scripting and more authenticity, the more the production and network got excited. He looked forward to the show, as it would give him the chance to help people by doing something he excelled at and was passionate about. Homesteading for Marty was about living freely deliberately, and simply. It was suggested that his children be part of it, and he discussed with all four of them. After a month, Matt and Misty agreed. Matt's expertise was hunting, while Misty's was gardening, but they were also capable builders. Filming usually took a few months, with only a limited time for post-production, as the series would start airing shortly after that. Marty and his children met the homesteaders for the first time on the day they walked into the property, 
and after talking with them and surveying the property to assess the problems, they would then decide on the best course of action. As they only had 7 to 10 days allotted for each location, they would only tackle projects that could be done in the given time frame. The producers had taken care of the legalities involved beforehand, including acquiring the permits to build, as well as sourcing the equipment, materials, and workers if necessary. Many people decided to live off the grid because they wanted a simple life, only to realize later on that it involved a lot of hard work, resourcefulness, and ingenuity in maintaining the place and dealing with all the problems that would crop up. The Rainies helped the homesteaders not just to survive, but to thrive. So what have been some fan-favorite episodes? In Hill of Death, a couple had moved to the Western Cascades, Oregon for a fresh start, but were on the brink of losing everything if they failed to become self-sufficient in their homestead. To reach fertile land, they had to climb a steep 100-foot-high cliff, mostly of bedrock. Marty used an excavator to carve a road for them to get there. Misty cleared the forest on top and built a livestock enclosure. Matt built a hydropower system for the homestead and an electric fence that would protect the livestock from mountain lions. In Paradise, California, the most destructive wildfire known as the Camp Fire in 2018 burnt down a family's homestead to the ground and they lost everything they owned and were effectively burned out. They were barely able to escape the raging fires themselves, but there were minimal losses to the livestock. Unfortunately, they were still paying the mortgage for a house that was gone and for a rental property they were living in. Marty built a huge granite rock and steel enclosure that was predator and fireproof for the animals and put in steel shipping containers as barns. Misty repaired the well water system and built a garden space. Matt installed a camera to monitor any dangerous predators and got an expert to remove rattlesnakes spotted there. The family moved into an RV while waiting for the insurance so that they could build a new house. In a golden opportunity, a family in Girdwood, Alaska was dependent on the steady income from their coffee house, but lost their business when the economy took a downturn. The Rainies helped make their 10-acre homestead become self-sufficient. Marty removed a huge chunk boulder to widen the road and make it safer. Misty invited her sister Melanie, who's a Girdwood resident, to help, as she turned the family's garage into a commercial kitchen, perfect for processing fish. Matt converted what was once the kid's treehouse into a predator-proof chicken coop. On day five, Marty was placed under quarantine as he was exposed to someone who might be positive for the COVID-19 virus. So the rest of the work was done with his children in charge. The family and their neighbor mined gold on their joint property after Matt helped remove another boulder. Ren and Innie, a couple from Ozark County, were thrilled to be featured in the Ozark Mountain Misery episode and were grateful for the improvements done on their homestead. The production company found out about them through Instagram, and after a series of interviews, the director and site manager came to check their homestead, and the rest of the production came next. The couple first met the Rainies on camera and described them as big-hearted, hard-working, real people when they got to know them. Molds grew inside the 15-foot yurt they built, becoming a health hazard, so they had to stay for most of the winter in a tent. With Marty in charge, they took down the yurt and built an octagon-shaped cedar log cabin in its place. Innie and Marty continued to work, even when the cameras weren't rolling. Ren had fun working with Misty, as the latter had a solar pump installed, and they built an efficient irrigation system for the vegetable garden. Innie went bow fishing with Matt, whom he said was down to earth. As to how they were portrayed in the show, they said they were relieved when they watched the episode and had a good laugh about it with friends. They were aware that some homesteaders were shown as ill-equipped, but they believe the production company did a good job in what was to be expected in a show that was all about rescuing people. Not everyone was happy about the way they were portrayed in the series. The couple who owned the Revolutionary Roots farm, Josh and Kim Zabek, was featured in the Under Siege episode of the first season and claimed that they were lied to by the producers as they were told that the show was about well-established homesteaders. It didn't sit well with them that they were shown as amateurs and unsure of what they were doing when in fact they run a successful farm and even had a thriving store. They were informed that drama would be added, and they were fine with that, but they didn't expect the length the production would go to in making this story more interesting. As they were harshly criticized by some of the viewers, Kim posted a video on her Facebook page explaining the true state of their farm and their livestock. Marty was informed of the couple's complaints, but said that he couldn't bring himself to say something derogatory about Kim and Josh, 
as Kim had nothing but nice things to say about him, despite being disgruntled with the show. He further said that his experience with her was amazing. The couple filed a lawsuit against the show for misrepresenting them. If one would base it on the homesteaders who were vocal about their experience on the show, there was no doubt that the Rainies were really good at what they do, and the show did help a lot of people. However, what was aired on TV wasn't entirely accurate, as not only did they not show everything that happened, but drama was also added to the storyline to make things appear more serious or problematic than they were. Ren and Innie's revelations gave an insight into how the rescue project went at their homestead. They said the Rainies had an incredible work ethic and did a lot of building, but they also had a lot of help from a Missouri log building company called Sticks and Stones. The owner was a pastor, and members of the church came to work on a log cabin. They were referred to in the show as the local homesteading community. Marty was truly appreciative of how they had come together to help their neighbor. And he said that the logs were acquired even before filling started, although Marty was seen cutting some cedar trees in the area and ordering about $2,000 worth of logs as they needed more. When the storm hit, everyone except for Innie and Ren evacuated. Due to the intense flooding, the worst one that Missouri had in a hundred years, Marty and the rest couldn't get back to the homestead on what was supposed to be their last day of filming and were unable to finish the work they started. As Marty said, Mother Nature won. However, Innie and Ren said that they were taken care of and all worked out well. Innie added that there was so much edited out, considering several days worth of filming were cut down to a 40 minute long episode. As far as accuracy was concerned, it was just the little details here and there that were not as they may have appeared in the show. The other couple, Kim and Josh, were less than happy, alleging that the series was fake, saying that they were presented other than what they really are. Some viewers wondered if the homesteaders were deliberately put in difficult scenarios or were made to appear inefficient and need the help. Marty believed he was helping people and that the show was about real people with real problems working together. It was natural for people living off the grid to encounter problems as years passed by. He said he's not judging the homesteaders for their lack of experience, nor did he yell nor condescend when teaching them how to do things properly, or when he had to tell them what needed to be done. According to Marty, people would have a hard time looking for a more natural, non-dramatic family from Alaska than his family. We go to work every day. We're not sitting around with some romantic TV lifestyle where nobody works and it's all fun and games, he proudly said. The concept of homestead rescue was that the Rainies saved homesteads on the edge of disaster. They had to build new structures and whatever else was needed to help set up a couple or family for success. As for instructions, they had to check the property for things that they could still use and repurpose to save money. However, if Marty convinced the producers that a particular homestead needed such and such for a particular project, then the budget for it was made available to them. It could become costly as they had to procure materials instead of sourcing them from the land. Also, even if the owners and the Rainies worked longer hours, they would still need to acquire the assistance of local contractors for equipment, tools, and the workforce to finish construction as they had a limited time frame. Despite the lawsuit and the never-ending controversy about the show's authenticity, Homestead Rescue was received well by viewers and is on its ninth season, while the spin-off, Homestead Rescue Rainy Ranch, is on its second season. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.